Why China should not mess with the king of the West Philippine Sea? The West Philippine Sea is a part of the South China Sea, is a vital and strategic region with significant economic, military and environmental importance. The territorial disputes over this area have been a source of tension, especially between China and the Philippines. The Philippines claims the West Philippine Sea based on history and international law. In 2016, the Permanent Court of Arbitration ruled against China's broad nine dash line claim, supporting the Philippines' rights within its exclusive economic zone. The West Philippine Sea holds immense strategic importance due to its role as a critical maritime route. This region is vital for international shipping and trade, and maintaining its stability is essential for global economic and security interests. The sea is one of the world's busiest sea lanes, with a significant portion of global trade passing through these waters. An estimated one-third of the world's shipping traffic transits this region, making it a crucial conduit for goods moving between Asia, Europe, and the Americas. This maritime route is also vital for the transportation of energy supplies. A large percentage of the world's oil and liquefied natural gas shipments pass through the West Philippine Sea, making it critical for global energy security. The West Philippine Sea serves as a strategic choke point. Control over this area allows for the regulation of maritime traffic, which can influence global trade patterns and economic stability. Any disruption in this region could have far-reaching effects on international trade and supply chains. The region's strategic location makes it a focal point for military strategy. It is surrounded by key players in the Asia-Pacific, including China, the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei. Control over the West Philippine Sea allows for significant influence over regional security dynamics and military operations. Furthermore, the West Philippine Sea is home to diverse marine ecosystems that are vital for environmental health and sustainability. Stability in this region allows for better management and protection of these ecosystems, which are threatened by overfishing, pollution, and habitat destruction. The region is home to diverse marine life and coral reefs that are crucial for environmental balance. China's construction of artificial islands and reclamation projects has caused significant ecological damage, threatening biodiversity. Because of its strategic location, the Philippines has important allies with both regional and global powers. This positioning not only influences the balance of power in Southeast Asia, but also has significant implications for global security and economic stability. The Philippines' nature places it near vital sea lanes. The Philippines has a mutual defense treaty with the United States, established in 1951. This treaty ensures that both nations support each other in the event of an external attack. The presence of American military bases and troops in the Philippines enhances regional security and acts as a deterrent against potential aggressors. But in reality, the Mutual Defense Treaty is a cover for a broader and hidden strategy, which is to contain America's primary enemy or primary competitor, which is China. The bases that are established in the Philippines are built with the intention of containing China, surrounding China. That's the main goal. The treaty stipulates that both nations would support each other if either party is subjected to an armed attack in the Pacific area. This includes both military and non-military support to address security threats. The presence of U.S. military bases and troops in the Philippines acts as a significant deterrent against potential aggressors. The strategic positioning of these bases enhances the defensive capabilities 
of the Philippines. American military bases in the Philippines, such as those previously located at Subic Bay and Clark Air Base, provide rapid support capabilities in case of a crisis. The United States provides training and military aid to the Philippines, helping to modernize its armed forces. This includes the transfer of defense technologies and equipment, which bolsters the Philippines' defense capabilities and readiness. The U.S. maintains a strategic military presence in the Philippines through agreements like the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement. This allows for the rotational deployment of U.S. troops and the repositioning of military equipment. The Mutual Defense Treaty helps balance the power dynamics in Southeast Asia. The presence of U.S. forces in the region acts as a counterbalance to the growing military capabilities of other regional powers, such as China. The Philippine Navy holds a paramount position in the West Philippine Sea, often referred to as the king of this strategically significant maritime region. This status is due to its crucial role in defending the Philippines, the Philippines' territorial claims, protecting its economic interests, and maintaining regional stability. The Philippines has a long history of maritime activity in the West Philippine Sea. The Philippine Navy has been patrolling these waters for decades, establishing a consistent presence that underscores the country's sovereignty over its territorial waters and EEZ. The 2016 Permanent Court of Arbitration ruling in favor of the Philippines invalidated China's expansive Nine Dash Line claim. This legal victory reinforced the Philippines' maritime rights, which the Philippine Navy is tasked with upholding and defending against external claims. The Philippine Navy conducts regular patrols and surveillance missions across the U.S. Philippine Sea. These operations are essential for monitoring maritime traffic, deterring illegal activities, and asserting the Philippines' territorial claims. Recent efforts to modernize the Navy have bolstered its capabilities. The acquisition of new ships, aircraft, and technology has enhanced the Navy's operational effectiveness. For example, the Philippine Navy recently added multi-role frigates, offshore patrol vessels, and surveillance drones, surface combatants, Jose Rizal class frigate. The most modern surface combatants of the Philippine Navy acquired to date are BRP Jose Rizal and Antonio Luna. The two ships are equipped with several subsystems, including a close-in weapon system, a vertical launching system, and a toy array sonar system, as well as several electronic subsystems. Delplar class offshore patrol vessel. Previously, U.S. Coast Guard cutters of the Hamilton class, granted to the Philippine Navy as part of the U.S. military assistance program. The first ship, Gregorio del Pilar, was handed over by the U.S. Coast Guard to the Philippine Navy on May 13, 2011. Currently, the three ships of the class are being used to train the organization on modern warship operations in preparation for future new assets being acquired under the AFP modernization program. Jacinto class offshore patrol vessel. Former patrol vessel of the Royal Navies of Hong Kong squadron until they were sold to the Philippines in 1997 upon the handover of Hong Kong to the Chinese government. Malware class offshore patrol vessel. The ships were handed over by the US government as part of the military assistance program, either directly to the Philippines, becoming the first major surface combatants of the newly formed post-war Philippine Navy, or to the South Vietnamese government. Several of those given to South Vietnam eventually were absorbed into the Philippine Navy upon their escape during the end of the Vietnam War. Most were already decommissioned or lost through the years, although only one ship is still in active service with the offshore combat force. Tarlac class landing platform dock. New Indonesian made landing platform docks, currently the Philippine Navy's foremost amphibious warfare platform 
and its first major brand, Nusha, acquisition since the 1990s. It was acquired under the Strategic Sea Lift Vessel project. The ships can carry a Philippine Marine Battalion landing team with up to 500 fully armed Marines with their vehicles and equipment, and can also carry two small landing craft utilities. The Philippine Navy received its first ships of the class on December 30th, 1946, and has received almost 30 units between 1946 and 1976. Alvarez Class Patrol Vessel The Alvarez Class are Philippine Navy versions of the Cyclone Class U.S. Navy, inshore patrol ships, previously used by the United States Naval Special Warfare Command for low-intensity conflict environments. The Philippine Navy received the lead class, Acero class patrol gunboats, ordered by the Philippine Navy from Israel shipyards to eventually replace the Thomas Batilo class fast attack crafts. Four of the boats are to be built in Israel and will feature missile armament using the Raphael Spike short range surface to surface missile, while the other four will be built in the Philippine Navy's Cavite Naval Yard under a technology transfer agreement, Navarrete class coastal patrol craft. Former Point class coastal cutters of the US Coast Guard, Philippine Navy received several units transferred by the US government and formerly used by the South Vietnamese Navy. Philippine President Marcos approved a $35 billion acquisition list put forward by the armed forces of the Philippines. Alongside Re Horizon 3, the new comprehensive defense concept put forward by the Philippine defense officials brings an increased emphasis on naval and air forces for the defense of the country. The Philippine Navy participates in joint exercises with allied nations like America, Japan, and Australia. These exercises strengthen defense capabilities and demonstrate a unified front in maintaining regional security. The consistent presence of the Philippine Navy in the West Philippine Sea serves as a deterrent to potential aggressors.